was good. It, you know, good back and forth and uh, opportunity for us to lay out our uh, uh, vision for how you uh, make sure that people on Social Security are going to have it, that, that are on it now, those that are approaching it, and uh, those that are mid-career or younger people, and how we're going to transform it and make sure they'll have a program in place. So I thought it was a, a very positive uh, conversation with the, the people of the country. That was Republican presidential frontrunner Rick Perry in Tampa this morning giving his spin on last night's Republican presidential debate. Perry is desperately trying to dig his way out of a hole he dug for himself by calling Social Security a Ponzi scheme, a failure and unconstitutional. Do you still believe that Social Security should be ended as a federal program as you did six months ago when your book came out? and return to the states? Or do you want to retreat from that? I I think we ought to have a conversation. uh, We're having that right now, Governor. We're we're running for president. I'll finish this conversation. But the issue is, are there ways to move uh, the states into Social Security for state employees or for retirees? We did in the state of Texas back in the 1980s. I think those types of thoughtful conversations with America, rather than trying to scare uh, seniors like you're doing and other people. Governor, the term Ponzi scheme is what scared seniors. You said if people did it in the private sector, did, did it what? would be called criminal. That's in your book. Yeah, what I said was... <laughs> Governor Perry, you got to quote me correctly. You said it's criminal. What I said was Congress taking money out of the Social Security Trust Fund is like criminal, and that is, and it's wrong. Social Security wasn't the only issue Rick Perry's opponents used against him. Does Governor Perry deserve any credit for all those jobs that were created in Texas? Well, look, um, (laughs) you know, I, I think Governor Perry would agree with me that if you're dealt four aces, that doesn't make you necessarily a great poker player. Does your governor deserve all that credit? Not quite. <laughs> when 170,000 of the jobs were government jobs. So I would put a la- little damper on this, but I don't want to offend the governor because he might raise my taxes or something. Rick Perry picked up another endorsement this evening, Nevada Governor Brian Sandoval. That's after Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal endorsed him on Monday. And a new Gallup poll out today shows after last week's NBC Politico debate, Rick Perry continued to generate more positive intensity than any other Republican. He leads the pack with a score of 24, but Mitt Romney has gained five points in intensity and is now at a score of 16. Joining me now, the intense editorial director for the AOL Huffington Post Media Group and MSNBC analyst, Howard Feynman. Howard, uh, we are watching Rick Perry uh, trying to dig his way out of the Social Security hole that he dug for himself. I I said after the NBC debate uh, last week, you cannot possibly win the presidency campaigning on the demonization of Social Security. How's he doing? He he didn't want to bring up Ponzi scheme. He wasn't going to use those no. words. Uh, no. Romney stuffed it onto him. And at a certain point, uh, the best he could do with Ponzi scheme this time around was to say, hey, I wasn't the first one to call it a uh, Ponzi scheme. Right. How's he doing? Well, not that great. Uh, and you can't, you're right, you, I don't think you can win the presidency that way, but that doesn't mean you can't win the Republican nomination that mm-hmm. way. Uh, the problem that he's got, that Brick Perry's got conceptually, is that if you call something unconstitutional and illegal, by definition, you don't want to fix it. How do you fix something <laughs> that's unconstitutional and illegal? So he's got a conceptual as well as a rhetorical problem, and Romney really, and everybody, and the, the other candidates let Romney handle that one. That was the an exercise in gang tackling there. All other, all these seven other candidates had something to go after Rick Perry on last night. And the crown jewel of the Perry governorship is starting to get a little tarnished with that pesky little constituent of his, uh, Ron Paul, who has the impertinence to mention things like, hey, you, all those jobs, a lot of those jobs are government jobs that were created there. Ron right. Paul talks about taxation increasing in the state of Texas. And a guy like Ron Paul can stay in this thing way beyond what's reasonable uh, because he can campaign on a shoestring, as can, I assume, Michelle Bachman. If those two yeah. stay on the stage as long as they possibly can, won't they be more of a problem for Perry than, uh, than, than Romney could possibly be on his own? 
Well, the dynamic of this is everybody else wants to play a role that suits them, but that also slows down Rick Perry's momentum. Ron Paul did it from the libertarian perspective. Michelle Bachman did it from the sort of the moral majority perspective, if you will. Mitt Romney did it from the managerial perspective. Rick Santorum did it from the immigration perspective. Uh, John Huntsman did it from the, you know, I'm a better manager than you are perspective. Everybody had some interest in touting themselves while at the same time trying to slow down Rick Perry. Because Rick Perry still, even with all the trouble he generated for himself on Social Security and on some other issues, you know, he's the guy who's still got the momentum. And the objective of the game now is to slow him down by any way possible. Michelle Bachman attacked his credibility and his ethics. So, you know, it's getting nasty really fast because they got to slow Romney, uh, slow, slow uh, uh, Rick Perry down if they can. We had a Romney spokesman uh, on our broadcast coverage after the last week's debate. Uh, who basically said Rick Perry is welcome to the front runner role because and this is what he meant that when yeah. you're the front runner the only way the other participants in the debate can get attention is by hitting the front runner how can Perry counter this well, he's got to uh, think through his answers. He, got, he has to stay calm. He has to have comebacks. I mean, I think Rick Perry is pretty good at counterpunching, but he doesn't always have the facts straight. And some of the laugh lines that he gets in front of the Tea Party when he has a Tea Party crowd on his side, after all, Rick Perry was playing a home game there. Some polls say that, you know, close to half of the Tea Party people see him as their favorite candidate. Uh, but he's got to get better at it and go down the third, fourth, and fifth level to explain himself. He's got to take advantage of the fact that everybody's aiming at him, and he didn't really do it very well last night. MSNBC political analyst Howard Feynman, thanks for joining me tonight, Howard. And it's going to be fun, Howard, to watch your intensity level increase <laughs> as this campaign I gets still... more intense. Lawrence, I still have my eye on Tim Pawlenty, and I know you do, too. <laughs> We're going to get him on this show. We've got him booked. He's coming. Okay, good.